Okay, we are starting with chapter 4 today, so if you don't have your chapter 4 math journal, you need to get that. We are going to begin on page 233 under where it says unlock the problem. But first, let's talk about our essential question. Our essential question asks, how can patterns help you place the decimal point in a product? And this is going to kind of help guide us for when we actually start multiplying decimals. On page 233, the question, the word problem is um, Cindy wanting to create a postage stamp quilt. Each rectangle has an area of 75 hundredths of a square inch. And it wants to know if she uses a thousand rectangles to make a quilt, what will be the area of the quilt? Well, to do that, we're going to have to move some decimals around and try and figure out what the area of the quilt is. So to do that, you first have to look and try and find the pattern. As you can see, the decimal point is moving over to the right. So after the example has been done, at the very bottom, if you take 75 hundredths times 1,000, the quilt will have an area of 750 square inches. But what is the decimal doing every time? Take a look at question one. It says, as you multiply by increasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? Go ahead and think about that for a second and think about what you would write down for your answer. If you said something about the decimal point moving place to the right as you're multiplying by a power of 10, you would be correct. So the decimal point moves one place to the right as you multiply by each power of 10. In our previous unit, we learned that zeros kind of represent the power of 10. So because 1000 has three zeros in it, I actually moved the decimal point three times to the right. Okay, go ahead and look at the bottom of the page under example one. And now let's talk about what happens when you're multiplying by a decimal. So something as, such as a tenth or a hundredth or a thousandth. And how that's different from multiplying by a power of ten. Look at the pattern. It shows 1,353 being multiplied by one. Well, since anything multiplied by one is itself, then that's easy. The next one is being multiplied by a tenth. Notice how the arrow shows that the decimal is being moved to the left. When you are multiplying by a decimal place value, the decimal is moving to the left. And because every number has a decimal point, an imaginary decimal point at the end, the arrow shows that it's moving from the very end after the 3 in between the 5 and the 3. So if the pattern continues and I'm multiplying by a hundredths, my answer would be 13 and 53 hundredths. So the decimal point moved twice because I had two numbers in my decimal that I was multiplying by. So look at number two. The question asks, as you multiply by decreasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? And the answer is that the decimal point moves one place to the left as you multiply by a decreasing decimal place value. So you first have to decide, is it, am I multiplying by a power of 10 such as 10, 100, or 1,000, or am I multiplying by a decimal place value such as a tenth, a hundredth, or a thousandth? And that will determine which way you are moving the decimal. If you're moving it to the right, or to the left. Okay, look at page 234. Under try this, it says complete the pattern. We're going to work through some problems together. Now, you should know that anything to the zero power is 1. So I drew that out over here in orange, that 10 to the zero power equals 1. So it's essentially asking what is 1 times 4 and 78 hundredth or 4.78. And that answer is just simply the same. Go ahead and look at the next one. This time I'm multiplying by 10 to the first power. How many decimal places do you think I'm going to move the decimal point? 
you should be thinking 1, and you're correct. So I'm actually moving the decimal point from between the 4 and the 7 over one place to the right, and it's now going to be 47.8. The next one I'm multiplying, or I'm multiplying by 10 to the power of 2. So this time I'm going to move the decimal point two places, and my answer becomes 478. And on the last one, I'm multiplying by 10 to the power of 3, so my answer is 4,780. Now, notice that I added in a zero. That's something that I do for myself so I don't forget to add that zero on the end. If you are multiplying by a, a number that is higher and you don't you run out of um, digits to put the decimal after, you that doesn't mean you just put it at the end every time. The answer is not 700. 478 every time. You have to add a zero for each place value that's not there. So for example, if I were to continue this pattern and it was um, 10 to the power of 4 times 4.78, then I would move the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, and I would add two zeros at the end. Okay, now let's try the next box, box B. 38 times 1 is just simply 38, but this time I'm multiplying by a tenth. So my decimal's not going to move to the right, it's going to move to the left. So that means that my answer for the second one is going to be 3.8. And on the last one, it's moving two times, and my answer is 38 hundredths. Okay, we're going to try one last one together. Over to the right in the blue, it says the decimal point moves one place to the blank for each increasing power of 10. And I filled that in to say right because when I'm doing increasing powers of 10, it moves to the right. So it just simply wants you to complete the pattern. They did zero power, one, the first power, second power, and third power. So if I'm doing 10 to the power of 3, that means I'm going to move my decimal point three times. And again, I added in that 0, and my answer is 17,040. Now I want you to go ahead and turn the pa to page 235, and I want you to do number 2 at the top. The first thing you need to think is, am I moving right or left? Once you figure that out, then it's pretty simple to just move the decimal. So, I want you to go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to work through these four problems, and then I want you to check it once you're done with me. Okay, now I want you to check your answers and make sure that they are similar. If they are not, then we have some more work that we need to do. But, if they are correct, then you can go ahead and continue working on the assignment. And I want you to finish this page, and then I want you to move on to page 237 and work through numbers 1 through 12. And yes, you have to do number 12. Um, if you are having problems and you did not get these correct, I want you to either find a friend to help you, or I want you to ask me when you come visit um, for your group. Whatever is not finished of these problems, um, it becomes homework and... This is everyone's assignment unless your teacher tells you otherwise. Have fun and good luck. And go Chiefs.